Okay. All right, we'll get started. It's uh, it's uh, Sunday, uh, April 7th, 2019, and we're going to pick up where we left off in our last study with uh, the book of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 18. We're in verse 21. We'll try to just work our way to the end of uh, chapter 18 tonight. And what we read here, verse 21, it says, Then came uh, Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother uh, sin against me, and I forgive him uh, till seven times? So uh, that's the uh, Peter of the little flock asking the Lord you know, a simple question. That's how we're starting out tonight. But we'll backtrack. We'll figure out why he's asking this and, and how we're going to go forward with it. Uh, so we'll open up in prayer and continue with this in just a moment here. So, uh, Lord, we're thankful for this day of grace where we're your ambassadors in a uh, sin-cursed earth that we can see souls saved. Uh, go out with your gospel, uh, the gospel of grace, and uh, see souls saved for your glory in this dispensation. Amen. Amen. So, in verse 21, we're seeing, it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother uh, sin against me, and I forgive him uh, till seven times? So Peter's asking this question, and, and we've, we've read this before at one point or another. And uh, mm -hmm. the reason why Peter's doing this is because if we remember from our study last time, they just went over a system <clears throat> in, about the kingdom of, of justice and judgment and everything else. That was what was... Uh, the past couple of verses, you're talking about um, talking about how in verse, I think it was verse uh, fifteen of Matthew eighteen, talking about thy brother said uh, trespass against thee, go and do this, and then verse sixteen, if he won't hear thee, then take two or three, and then verse seventeen, if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. So he's explaining this kingdom system, this kingdom system of justice and judgment, and so on and so forth. And then when you get to verse uh, 20, uh, he's talking about two or three gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And so then we get to verse 21. And it says, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how else shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? So based on this system that he's talking about, based on this uh, system of judgment and judgment in the kingdom, or justice and judgment in the kingdom, uh, if someone sins against him, how often do we forgive him? Is where he's basing all this at and everything. So uh, he, he asked this, and, and, they, and the reason why Peter's asking this, if we uh, move ahead to uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, is because Peter knows he's being trained by the Lord for a prominent position in the kingdom. And that's uh, Matthew 19 and verse 28. We'll get to this in a couple of lessons, where he says, and Jesus said unto them, meaning the twelve, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So Peter knows he's going to be having a position, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, having a high power of uh, justice and judgment and so on and so forth. So these things that he is being taught, he's got, he knows he has to implement, or he has to carry it out, and so on and so forth. So when we see that from um, Matthew 19, 28, and what he's talking about, and then it goes on in verse 29 explaining what he, you know, everyone that's forsaken this, they're going to get this, uh, so on and so forth, brings us back to where we are in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, saying, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother uh, sin against me, and I forgive him? Uh, till seven times. And in, the, in verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. So he's not just saying this randomly, you know, seventy times seven, because seventy times seven makes uh, 490. He's trying to teach a, a principle behind it. Because as we know, from uh, where we're at, this, this has to do with uh, teaching about the, the uh, distinction of where um, everything's at concerning um, Israel's timeline. And it's supposed to be from Nehemiah's return uh, out of the captivity to the end of the tribulation. We were at the 70th week of Daniel at the end. And so that 490 uh, represents a certain type of thing where they can understand this. And that 70 times 7 does show, it does also teach them that they, they need to add on to you know multiple forgiveness. But this uh, also shows this concept of like 70 weeks of mercy. So 70 times 7, you've got 70 weeks, and then um, 
each week equals seven years, you have 490. So this is what he's trying to teach essentially is that there's this 70 times seven is, is the point that he's trying to make is that, yes, abundance of mercy is what you're supposed to show to your brother in the kingdom based on uh, you know, what he's teaching him. But there's a certain thing behind it as well based on Israel's timeline. So, and, and the way it works for their national forgiveness. So, uh, so we see that from verse 22. And he's saying, uh, until seven times, until, or but until 70 times seven. He says, in verse 23, now he goes into a parable. And the parable, we've heard, we've read this, we've heard this at one time or another as well. But again, we might have not have, uh, or by now we may have, but the first time we've heard this, uh, you may not have rightly divided it. But it says, Therefore uh, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which uh, would take account of his servants. It says, And when he had begun to reckon, uh, uh, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. So you're seeing that this is some activity. This is going to take place in the future. Everything about the parable is always about timing, how this is all going to take place at some point in the future. Uh, or one, one thing or another. The, the parables, while they're being spoken in front of the multitudes, while they're being spoken in front of everybody, these, these parables explain about the timing of the kingdom or issues within the kingdom and, and their timing. And so he says, And when he had begun to reckon, uh, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. And then in verse 25, but for as much as he had not to uh, pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had in payment to be made. And of course, this sounds, this sounds harsh to sell not only the individual, but also to sell his wife in slavery and everything that he had. But for Israel, that was part of how things were. That was the law. If you look back at uh, Leviticus, I believe it's Leviticus um, 25, Leviticus 25, 39. Leviticus 25, 39, talking about the law. What you'll see here is just an example. Let's see. And what you'll see here, you see an example where this, this plays out. It says, uh, and if uh, thy brother that uh, dwelleth by thee waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondservant. But as an hired servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the year of the Jubilee. And so what you see in verse 39 says, And if your brother that dwelleth uh, by thee waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, so it would be normal for someone of the uh, house of Israel for to, to, if for some reason they end up poor, the law says, or the law of Moses says, if you're, if one Jew is is uh, poor to the point where they need to be sold into slavery, and uh, you receive that person, you can you can purchase that person so that they don't die of starvation or whatever. Uh, receive him, but don't treat him harshly. Don't treat him or his property or his people. Uh, the law of Moses states that you're to treat them uh, respectfully, and so on and so forth. And so, uh, and you know, you're seeing that there. He says, don't compel him to be to serve as a bond servant, but as a hired servant, and as a sojourner, and and uh, so on and so forth. And that was the law. So when we come back to Matthew chapter 18, and we're in verse 25, and we're hearing about this parable that the Lord's teaching, and he's teaching this for the point of forgiveness. This is why when Peter's saying, you know, how often do I forgive? He's starting out with a parable that has to do with the law of Moses, it has to do with um, Jews, Israel, everything, these kinds of certain topics where, of course, it's not going to have anything to do with the Apostle Paul, the body of Christ, the revelation of the mystery, none of that. It's not going to fit our, our uh, content for today. It's not going to fit uh, where we are today. But it does fit Israel perfectly. In fact, we can turn to the law where it says these things. So we see in verse 25, I believe, yeah, 25, it says, But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. So the servant, 
and therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. So he's, he's saying that about how to uh, pay thee all. And he says, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. And so you see, the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and, uh, and did everything concerning the debt. So when, when that takes place, you're seeing the action of the Lord of that servant. And so that takes place, and you see from verse 26, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. So in verse 28, it says, the same, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. So, of course, you're seeing that this is all uh, coming into play, that the, the uh, first, or the, the uh, wicked servant there is unbelieving Israel, and the brother in debt is part of the believing remnant. And so what you're seeing here is, uh, and of course the, uh, the one that forgives all is, is the Lord Jesus Christ and coming in his uh, ministry to Israel. He says, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. So of course, when you see that in verse 28, the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. Uh, we're not going to be looking at this as a saved individual going out to a lost individual because saved and lost has application for the dispensation of grace and the body of Christ. We're not reading, you don't want to read that into Matthew 18. You want to stick with where we are about how a fellow servant would go out to his fellow servant. Thus, you would read that about uh, believing Israel, unbelieving Israel, uh, so on and so forth, or the little flock of Israel. And those are the kinds of hats you want to put on when you see what's going on with uh, Matthew 18 and this parable. So, verse 27, going back to that, it says, Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. It says, verse 20, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And so we see that uh, from there, which, of course, that would be against the law. If we look at Deuteronomy uh, 15, verse 2. Uh, Deuteronomy 15 and verse 2, and what we're going to see here, um, talking about the creditor and the debtor and everything else, the law talks about this too, because there's going to be people that owe in Jewish society, and there's going to be people that are creditors and people who are lenders, and so you're seeing uh, a time where, where debt needs to be paid, and so on and so forth, and how this needs to be uh, how this needs to come to pass, what the law states, when, when somebody owes somebody something, how does this, you know, how does this need to be taken care of? What does the law say about this? So uh, Deuteronomy 15, verse 2, says, And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbor shall release it. Uh, he shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. And it goes on uh, with more about that. But you're just seeing more about how, how it's to go about. So you see that from uh, verse 28, as we go back to uh, Matthew 18, 28, it says, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. So, of course, that's not somebody who's obeying the law. That's someone doing their own, having their own mindset, uh, sticking to their own self-righteousness, which would be somebody of unbelieving Israel, a Pharisee, most likely someone sticking to the law, or sticking to their own version of the law, making up their own rules as they go along, uh, adhering to whatever they say goes, which is not someone who would obey the Lord when they see him. And that would be uh, somebody of unbelieving Israel, going after perhaps somebody of the little flock. And it says in verse uh, 29, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So, uh, we see that there, and it says in verse 31, So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And so we see that uh, there. If we look at also 
a good uh, cross-reference for this is Hebrews 13.3. If we look at Hebrews 13.3, uh, what we can get from this in uh, yeah, Hebrews 13.3, uh, I wanted to have a good cross-reference uh, cross for that. Um, as it talks about those that are in bonds or in adversity, um, this, this is a verse that talks about brotherly love, but this is brotherly love, of course, talking about Israel. Uh, you know, brother, brother with brother in uh, the twelve tribes, brother with brother under law, brother with brother in prophecy. And of course it says, uh, in verse 3, Hebrews 13, 3 says, Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. This is a doctrine that's going to be taught amongst the little flock, and which was, as we saw from Deuteronomy, uh, also taught within the law, and also we saw a little bit of that in um, uh, was in Leviticus as well, about how to treat, treat others essentially, at least in here with respect or, or, or with compassion, even though they're, they're, they may be your debtor. You, they may owe you. It's still that the law says to treat them decently or respect, respectfully. Or, but you're seeing in this parable, in Matthew 18, how this, this uh, individual is grabbing somebody by the throat, say, pay me everything you owe me, uh, so on and so forth. So there's this disrespectful attitude, there's this self-righteous attitude, there's this religious mentality saying, uh, pay me everything that you owe me. And of course, that's not what his Lord did to him, and yet he's a member of unbelieving Israel. So you're seeing, uh, as the identities are put together in this in this Jewish parable, how, how the Lord can forgive a member of, of the unbelieving Israel nation, uh, and yet, when it comes time for that person to forgive someone of the little flock, or whatever it may be, uh, their debts or debtors, uh, you know, he, this person doesn't have the ability to do so, or won't do it for whatever reason. So we'll see how that plays out in verse 32 of Matthew 18, when it says, Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? So you're seeing again, talking about how how one individual should have had compassion on thy fellow servant, and it's not about how the saved should have compassion on the lost, and the lost should have compassion on the saved, and so on and so forth. It's about these are two fellow servants. They're in one nation out of twelve tribes, and so on and so forth. And so, this is all answering Peter's question from what we're seeing, the Apostle Peter's question as he's speaking to the Lord. Based on everything that he was just hearing about this system of, of everything, about a uh, uh, system of justice, a system of judgment that's going to be in the kingdom, this parable is being explained to Peter. How often should you forgive? You should forgive 70 times 7. And here's a parable to go with it based on how situations are pretty much going to be going based on this group, based on that group, based on the Lord. So, verse 33 uh, says, Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And this is why the Lord taught what he taught. If we look at Matthew chapter 5, we go back to verse 44. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, what we'll see there is exactly the same principle. He says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, teaching the little flock whether they were in debt or not. And he says, uh, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That's what we're seeing played out here. It says that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son uh, to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. And he goes, and he goes on from there. But we're seeing an example of this even in Matthew chapter 5, which fits into Matthew chapter 18, which plays out in Daniel's, uh, or actually after Daniel's 70th week, plays out into the Millennial Kingdom which is what's 
what the Lord is teaching in Matthew 5 and what the Lord is teaching in Matthew 18. So, as we continue with this, and going back to Matthew chapter 18 and verse uh, 33, he says, Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So this also goes back to Matthew chapter 5 as well, but it goes back to verse 25. If you look at Matthew 5 again, we'll go a little bit further back into verse 25. Talking about being cast into prison. If, uh, if they don't deal with adversity quickly, if they don't deal with adversity before a certain time. And so he says, in, uh, let's see, about being uh, delivered to the tormentors till they should pay all that was due him. What we see there in verse uh, 25 of Matthew 5, says, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Uh, verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt uh, by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. And you're seeing the example of this here, and it all has to do with, with the idea of forgiveness. And this is what Peter's, you know, this is the parable being explained to Peter based on the principles being taught that goes all the way back to Matthew chapter 5, which is going to be set up for that system of justice and, and judgment that we're going to see play out in the uh, kingdom. So we see that from verse uh, 34. And he says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So of course this goes back, if you look at Matthew chapter 6, just one chapter over, going into Matthew 5 and 6, now Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. And uh, let's see, well actually we'll go up to uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, and we'll go into 14. But we're seeing the idea of forgiveness, the idea of kingdom forgiveness, and how this works out with what he's talking about here. He's saying, uh, you know, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also to you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. We see from um, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's going to be, of course, the kingdom where, where we're going with all this. And of course, he says, give us this day our daily bread as they pray for bread, that they're going to receive that every day. Uh, that's what Israel will get. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Of course, talking about you know, the debts we're reading about. And that's what Peter is praying about. How often do we forgive people? So then he says, 70 times 7. And then, of course, we see in verse 13, he says, and lead us not into temptation, because during that time, the Antichrist is going to have a world full of temptation with the mark of the beast and everything else. And he says, but deliver us from evil, which is the Antichrist and the world system itself at that time. He says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So you see this play, this principle play out again in Matthew chapter 6, just like it was in Matthew chapter 5, and it comes out even further when we're in Matthew chapter 18. And as you see that, as we go back up to verse 21, and it says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And we saw that answer in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and you're seeing this again in Matthew chapter 18, but it's played out with this parable. And we've heard, like we said earlier, you've probably heard this parable you know, many times. It might have been something that you're supposed to, quote-unquote, obey in church. You know, when you go to the local church and they say, well, Matthew 18, that's, that's, our, that's our doctrine we need to listen to and obey. And if your brother sins against you, you need to uh, forgive him 70 times 7. And there's, there's truth to that if, if it fits. You, know, I mean, you might be able to take a truth out of that as it fits the situation as needed. It's, it's good information. It's, it's, it's doctrine you can learn from. But of course, this is not doctrine for us. This is not doctrine we can take and 100% obey because this is not us in this, in this chapter. This is not our book. This is not information that is us at all. 
the book of Matthew is not anything, you know, where if someone comes up to you and tries to persuade you or trick you or anything else and says, well, shouldn't I be forgiven 70 times 7? Say, well, that's not, that's not, uh, I'm not that audience. We're not that audience. Nobody around is that audience. So, um, if we look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, this is where we are today. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. What we read here in Ephesians 4.32, it says, uh, actually we'll go up to verse 31. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Of course, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Ephesians, you know, saved members of the body of Christ, so this is Paul writing to members of the body of Christ, people who are already saved. And people who are already saved are to obey this, where uh, they're forgiving one another, uh, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath already, or hath forgiven you. So the whole point of why we would forgive somebody in the first place is not so that we can be part of a judicial uh, judgment system in Israel's kingdom in the future. That's why Peter does this in Matthew chapter 18. He's part of the 12, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, who will be part of implementing this system, and he's going to need to do this. And, of course, teaching that 400, you know, 70 times 7 equal 490, that's a little lesson to him, remembering that he's been given, or Israel's been given, 490 years, and 7, uh, was it 70 times 7, you know, each, each year equals... Each week equals seven years, and they've got 70 years from Nehemiah all the way up to the to the end. So uh, we see that from uh, where we are in Matthew chapter 18. But forgiveness for the body of Christ is based on the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid for our sins. And so we see that from Ephesians 4.32, that even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us, that's why we go out and we forgive our our saved brothers and sisters for whatever it may be that that we have against them or they have against us or whatever it is. It's because Christ is our head. Christ is our purpose. Christ is the reason. Christ is our life. And so, if you look also at, I believe it's Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, I think it's verse 13. Yes, yeah, Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Paul teaches the same thing concerning forgiveness. So we're seeing a difference. We're intentionally looking and we're rightly dividing the word of truth between forgiveness in the body of Christ and forgiveness based on Israel's systems that they have set up for the kingdom, for the earthly kingdom. So uh, Colossians chapter uh, 3, verse 13 says, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out uh, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. But you're seeing where he says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, uh, having, uh, where you, uh, hath he quickened together with him, uh, having forgiven you all trespasses. Actually, that's 2, I'm sorry. That was, that was uh, Colossians 2.13, I mean 3.13. 3.13 is uh, for, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So you're seeing that he says in, in Colossians 3.13, um, just as so we saw from 2.13, that was a good verse on forgiveness as well. But on 3.13, he's saying forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as... Uh, as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So you're seeing these two verses based on forgiveness, Colossians 2.13, Colossians 3.13. So uh, these two verses on forgiveness explain forgiveness in the church, the body of Christ, the dispensation of grace, and we have also what we're seeing in Matthew chapter 18. So uh, with that, we'll uh, stop here for now. We'll pick up next time in uh, the book of Matthew with Matthew chapter 19, and then we'll go verse by verse from there in our lessons next time.